Yo, what is up guys, it's Pedro here. In today's video, I'll be talking about Jahan Dotson and why I think this year is an absolutely huge year for him and why I think he can have a very solid season for the Washington Commanders this season with Jaden Daniels, his new quarterback. If you guys are new, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button and that notification bell as well so you never miss a video. All those things help out a ton. It's free and it would really make my day. Also, comment down below your stat predictions for Jahan Dotson this season and if you would be satisfied with that. So let's get into it. And before people are like, oh, you're, you know, you're crazy. He's not going to be out of the league after this year. Yeah, he's not. When I'm saying this is a make or break year for him, I'm kind of saying if he wants to be a number one receiver in this league or even a high tier two receiver in this league, he's going to have to show it this season. Or at least if he wants to do that with the Washington Commanders, I believe he's going to have to have a very big season this year because, you know, first year he showed a lot of good things. He really did. Played 12 games, had over 500 yards, I think seven touchdowns, had a very solid season. This past year, he had a down year. He had a you know down year, uh, his stats were worse, and expectations were very, very high for him going into the season, so it was very disappointing to see what he did, and it was not only him, you know, I didn't think the scheme was great for him. His like average yards per catch was way lower because they weren't targeting him deep. And it just, it, it wasn't great. And there were games where he's barely getting the ball. But also, again, at times, it was his fault. He was dropping some passes. And uh, he just, he wasn't the same necessarily player he was last year and, or the year before. And I think part of that could have been confidence that maybe he wasn't early on in the season getting the ball as much as he thought he would or, uh, you know, getting the ball deeper down the field as much as he was the year before or getting the ball in space and being able to get yards after catch because he was able to do that at a you know pretty good level high level in his first year here in Washington you know he that touchdown against the Giants last few seconds or last few minutes of the game he caught it spin move just he's he's able to do stuff like that I think that's something EB didn't do well one of the many things but that was one of the main things not getting those guys the ball more in space like forcing those guys got those guys targets so Jahan you know last year part of it was him part of it was EB maybe you can say part of it was how to uh, but this year is huge for him if he wants to be a key player for this team for the coming future, he's going to have to have a big year this year. Let's say he goes out and has a, I don't know, what did he have last year? Let's say he has a 50, 50 catch season for 580, uh, 580 yards and five touchdowns. That's solid. It's not first round type production, but it's solid. And I'm not saying that's solid for him. I'm just saying in general for a receiver, that's like solid production. You're going to stay in the NFL like uh, if you do that for a long time. But you're not a number two. You're a number three, number four receiver with that type of production. So he might still be on the team, but he's not going to get his fifth year option picked up. And, you know, certainly they're going to be looking at other receivers in the draft or free agency. Depends on how Luke McCaffrey plays. If he's, you know, a stud, if he has a solid season, maybe 500 yards in his rookie year, which for a third round pick who's new to the position, that's pretty good, and you can feel good about him going into the future. But even if that happens, if Jahan has a mid-type of season, then maybe you have to go out and get another receiver. But let's say Jahan goes out there and has you know plays all 17 games, which he did this past season. Let's say he gets 65 catches for 790 yards, which is pretty good. It's not amazing, but it's it's pretty good and six touchdowns and you're like you know what this guy can at least be a number two for us and i think you know the chemistry is going well with him and Jaden, and even you know terry and jahan so we feel good about him and we think he can you know take another step the next year okay he can be your number two but he has to show he has to definitely play better this year and i think he will i think he will because the circumstances weren't amazing for him last year, but again, he's not, you know, he's at a little bit of a fault too, 
because you know he was dropping some passes and he wasn't 100% the same player. And I think the confidence you know did affect him. And he did have some crucial drops. Like some of the passes weren't. I think it was a Giants game. Like it wasn't an amazing pass by Howell, but John needs to catch that every single time for a guy that his hands were supposed to be very, very good. And you see the talent there. He catches it effortlessly, but at times he makes some crucial drops. And Terry did too, I'm not gonna lie, but Jahan made a lot of those and that's something he needs to work on this year. Uh, it seems like from, you know, pictures in the off season, looks like he's gotten a little bit bigger, which is good. It's, you know, he's not super small, 5'11", probably really like 5'10", 180. So maybe he got to 185, 190. Uh, which is solid for him. And I think reasonable expectations for him are 750 plus yards this year. I wouldn't be ecstatic with that production, no, because he's a first round, he was a first round pick a few years ago, a couple years ago, but that's solid for a number two receiver in this league. And right now, we don't know if we have a number two receiver. So if he can show that, that's good and that fills a hole. Best case scenario, is I mean best best case scenario is like 1100 yards but let's say realistically 960 yards and seven eight touchdowns then you're like okay this guy can be a high tier two and we feel good about a receiver position because we got Terry who's a dog who's a number one we got Jahan who's a good number two maybe he can be a number one and then you got a guy like Luke McCaffrey who's still you know developing and maybe he can be something special as well and then you know you can always bring in free agents and glue guys or, or draft a couple other mid-round guys that you develop to be rotational type guys like a Jawan Jennings type from San Francisco uh, but you have that core there that's the best case scenario and I really do hope that happens because uh, you know Jahan is very talented and you saw in his rookie year a lot of very good things in limited time or, I mean, I guess he played a decent amount, but he also was hurt. 12 games, 523 yards, seven touchdowns. I believe like he was hurt for one of the, those games, so really didn't play 12 full games and was coming back from injury. So like for a couple games, which you know limited his production and for half of the season, they were just running the ball like 50, 60 times, or maybe not 50, I don't know what the numbers were, but they were running a lot. And I remember that definitely, you know, he, he got very few targets, so. I was very satisfied with what Jahan did in his rookie year. So if Jahan can do that plus a little bit more over 17 games, then I'll feel good about him um, and feel good about the receiver position going into next year. And instead of focusing on that, you can focus on adding another, I mean, I think you should anyways, but focus on adding a left tackle or a right tackle, whatever offensive lineman you need to help your young wide receiver. And I think I remember doing the conversions and if, you know, the per game stats Jahan had in his rookie year would have put him on pace for like 750 yards and like 10, 11 touchdowns, something like that, which for a rookie is very, very solid. And again, uh, limited targets in some of those games because they were just running the ball so much and he was coming back from injuries, so could have even been worse. So again, if he can just do that a little bit higher level than he did in his rookie year, get you to 850 yards, eight, nine touchdowns, I'm gonna feel really good about him and this receiver room. And I think that, um, yeah, I think that's very realistic though. I think that is very realistic. And you see even Terry last year had a down year, barely got over a thousand yards. And every year before that, he was getting a thousand yards really no problem and i th it was a i think it's a big eric bienemy thing and having cliff kingsbury here is going to help a lot loves to pass the ball and i think he's going to find creative ways to get jahan and terry the ball and not only get them the ball because getting them the ball is one thing but getting them the ball in areas of you know strength for them so you know terry if you're not able to he's great you know if you need to throw a contested ball throw it to him. But if not, he can get you, know, get you some stuff in space. Jahan's very good in the red zone. Didn't use him much that there last year. Scott Turner wasn't amazing, but hey, one thing he did do well with Jahan was get him involved in the red zone. And he, yeah, seven touchdowns in his rookie year in 12 games is outstanding. So um, 
my I'll give my prediction for Jahan this year. I'm gonna say I guess I didn't even show this play. This was him and uh, Jaden Daniels. Jaden throwing it to him and a nice catch in OTAs and, or not, I think yeah that was OTAs. So nice throw throwing it only where Jahan can get it and a very nice catch as well because that's not an easy catch. He catches with both, but like for like half a second he's catching it with one hand. So that is it for today's video. I'm really hoping for Jahan. I, I think he's very talented. He's got good aura. Seems like a confident guy. And I think he'll have a good season for the Commanders. But it is a big year for him because this is a new regime. And how good he does this year will determine how well, how, how much they're willing to invest in him. Maybe give him a contract extension. Or if he doesn't have a great year, they'll probably want to bring in their own guy because again it's not he's not necessarily their guy because they didn't draft him but yeah that's it for today's video hope you guys did enjoy if you did hit that like button subscribe if you guys are new and turn on that notification bell so you never miss a video comment down below some video suggestions and also if you stay till the end like usual i'm gonna throw out an og player for you guys to comment and i'm still you know I guess stalling a little bit, trying to think of one, but let's go ahead and go, we'll go Preston Smith, not too much of an OG, and I don't know how much fans really like him, but Preston Smith, and yeah, thanks for watching, hope you guys enjoyed, and peace.